Hello guys, uh, welcome to the second part of this uh, tutorial. This is the part where we actually uh, import our camera solve and put our 3D objects into the scene. Uh, we're not compositing yet, but this is actually probably one of the toughest parts. Uh, now there's many ways to do this, uh, to render out your 3D objects, but uh, this is one way I found really helpful and it's probably the best way I've found so far. Uh, if you found a different way, feel free to put a video response or something like that uh, on the video, but I found this way method from another YouTuber, I'll probably edit his name in right now, but yeah, go check him out, I'll probably leave a link to his channel in the description. Uh, yeah, so now moving on, the first thing we want to do is import our scene, so we, we go to file open scene and we select our camera soft that we saved uh, with Vuju and don't save. So this is going to import our camera, which is right there, those little dots right there, and that's pretty much it. So basically, those dots are pretty much the same. Uh, if we actually go into this camera, panels, look through select it, and scroll through this right here, you, as you can see, we're actually like um, moving in space. So as you can see, it created a virtual camera us to play around with. So the nice thing about this is you can just drop in 3D objects. Oops. Come back here. Delete. We can drop in 3D objects like this. So you know I just added a cube right there like oh yeah. So see so if we scroll around you know there's our cube in the scene. Uh, so right now we have to fix a couple things. First of all that cube is not really uh, aligned with the top of the table. It's a little bit above. So this is important. Uh, remember how we put in the scene geometry? This is why you do that because if we had all these points tilted around and stuff, our camera rotated and all that stuff, it'd be super extremely hard to drop any 3D objects into our scene. So this saves a lot of time and stress for us. So uh, give yourself a pat on the back if you did that. So now moving on, uh, if we go into the camera, which I'm going to do right now, look through selected, and we scroll through, you know, it's fitting in a little bit better. Uh, not perfect, but yeah, it's it's good enough, maybe a little bit lower. Yeah, that, that seems good. Okay, so another thing you want to do is you want to create a plane, or yeah, basically, yeah, basically it's just a flat plane below your box. And what will this will do is it will catch all your shadows, your ambient inclusion, etc. So I'm just gonna scale this up a bit. Don't need to scale up too much. Uh, but as you can see, our plane is the same exact color as our object. So what I'm going to do after I reposition this is I'm going to make another Lambert using a Hypershade. So I'm going to go to Windows, Render Editors, Hypershade, and I'm going to make a new Lambert. So new Lambert. Okay, good. I'm going to change the color. Come on to like red so we can uh, to red okay there we go so we can s tell the difference between the box and the plane so I'm just going to set it mat select it to material and there go so we just dropped our 3d object in there so now we're going to go on to lights. So we need a light on our scene, obviously, uh, to see anything. I paused there for a second. Okay, so uh, come on. Let me zoom on this guy. Okay. So first thing is uh, we're actually going to create a spotlight. So create lights spotlight where's the light okay there we go 
um, panels, and I'm going to look through selected. So we're actually looking through our light right now. So basically, wherever you're facing is where the spotlight will shine its light on. So now let's see and observe where our light is coming from in our scene. And it looks like it's coming from the left side. So I'm going to position the light uh, pretty much on the left side of the cube. It's coming like right there. That that sounds about great. Yeah, that's that's about good. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna resize our plain bit just just to be safe. And if we go into here, oh, we actually want to add it, edit some uh, properties in the light. So let's see. We don't want to use depth math shadows. We want to use ray tracing. Shadows, ray tracing, shadows. So you want to use ray tracing shadows. Uh, just bump these up a bit. Uh, yeah, that should be good. And let's see. Should be some thing that says emit photons. Oh, there we go. You want to emit photons. I'll just bring that down a bit, actually. And yeah, that that should be good. So. Now we want to change uh, change some uh, render settings. Uh, so now we actually we want to change the prefix, or basically when we render this out, it's going to render out a sequence like before. So this is basically just the name you're going to give each of those photos in your sequence. So I'm just going to call it com not cam composite underscore and then the render layer since we're going to be rendering different layers. And I don't want the different layers to be overriding each other and I'm just going to select uh, Targa. Where's Targa? Okay, there we go. Uh, and we want to name it like that. So our name dot the number dot the extension. So that's what, what's going to be. Uh, the start frame is one obviously. The end frame is 281. So that's the length of our animation. And everything else is good. So instead of using a software render, we're going to use a mental ray. And first thing I want to do is actually go to quality. Come on. And I'm just going to go to to save time, I'm going to just do preview. But when you're actually rendering, you probably want to do production. So I'm going to use preview motion blur. So what will this this will do basically is create a uh, fake motion blur. So if your camera is moving around, it'll create motion blur. So your your object will fit into your scene better. So. Now I'm going to create indirect lighting. Uh, you can just click global illumination. This will this will like create uniform uh, global uh, illumination. But I'm going to do uh, image based lighting. So our lighting is actually coming from somewhere, it's, and it's stronger in some areas. So I'm just going to select one of these random pictures in our in our sequence to be our global illumination and I'm just gonna click that final gathering and just scale that up a bit. That should be fine. I should scale this up a bit too. Uh that should be good. So let's give this a test render. Uh, yeah, Wait, after you start rendering with mental ray, change some of these settings, you're going to notice it's going to take a little bit longer. So looking pretty nice, uh, yeah. Looking pretty nice. So I'm going to exit out this, and now we can, we can get into making our new render layers. So what you want to do is select your object that you're dropping to your scene or all the objects you're dropping into your scene and uh, your image plane 
or you're, yeah, you're playing and you want to say press this button uh, create new layer and assign selected objects I'm going to click it four times because I want to create four new layers the first one is going to be my color layer the second one come on, is going to be my let's say shadow layer third one is going to be the alpha layer fourth one is going to be reflection layer okay so for our color layer we just want to render out the color nothing else so what we're gonna do is uh, create a new light and I'm gonna create an ambient light where is that? It's right here move it over here closer to us Oops. Come on. Sorry. Just move it right there. There we go. Okay. okay that's fine. It doesn't really matter where it is. Now I'm going to edit some properties. Actually, only one. You see where it says ambient shade? You want to turn that all the way down. You want you don't want any ambient shade. Okay, so that should be good. And for the plane, I'm going to go to X. Actually, object display. No. Where is it? It's somewhere here. Oh, I forgot where it was. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, it's right here. Where it says render stats, I'm going to turn primary visibility. I'm going to unclick that. And when it turns orange, that means it's only going to happen with that layer. So that means if you go back to your other render layers, it's going to be fine. So if we actually test render this. See, we just get the color. So that's what we want. And actually, uh, when, we, when you see all that, like, uh, those images in the background. We don't want those images in the background, so I'm actually going to select the camera. Where are you, camera? Where? Oh, this is the light. Oopsies. Panels, perspective. Let's go back. Perspective view. Select the camera. Go. Oops. Go into our layer. Color layer. Uh. No, we want to. I'm going to try to select the image plane that we use. Oh, I think it's this. Yeah. And I'm just going to change the alpha. I'm going to right click, say, uh, create layer override, and then put this alpha game to zero. Image. So what we have to do is create a lower uh, a layer override and get rid of the visibility of that image. So. I'm just going to go to render settings and god why is it so slow and I'm going to click on this little black box under uh, image based lighting and I'm going to go to render status for this image and you want to right click and uh, press create la layer override and uncheck that box so what that will do is basically just not show uh, that image that that we use for our global illumination. So as we can see, uh, it gives us just the color. And if we check our alpha channels, uh, as you can see, it only displays the box and nothing else.